right there. Yes, a coin flip. Oh, bunnies versus bunnies. Everyone's playing bunnies lately. Isn't that exciting? Um, yeah, this is fine. We'll keep this. Not great, but we've got plays for at least three turns. So, probably open up with Ritualist, I'm thinking. Looks like he's going to be doing some ramping, is what it looks like. So, that seems pretty good for him. I can trade a Ritualist or a Bloodbearer for the uh, Howling Brave if I have to, pretty easily. Eulogist, I can play on turn two. Yeah, so I'll probably play Eulogist before combat and then go to combat if he keeps his guy up. Let's see if he swings in. Oh, a Pack Raptor. Ooh, that's mean. It's kind of counterproductive if he's playing Ramp, though. If I can get something big enough, I should be fine. But if he keep, if he plays like two or three Pack Raptors to gain this game, I'm gonna be in bad, bad shape. So we'll see what happens here. No swings. I won't have a swing on this following turn, unfortunately, because I'm, you know, that's a negative. Uh, I would lose my guy. He wouldn't lose his guy. So luckily, I have some removal in the deck. Unfortunately, I don't have the second. Wild resource. That's the clunkiest part of the deck, I'd say, is the Bucktooth Commander, because I, I have to go light on wild resources playing this deck the way we've designed it. And uh, that's not the greatest for us. Uh, next turn, I'll get two Battle Hoppers, which seems pretty good. It seems not too bad. Eventually, maybe I'll play a Necessary Sacrifice and get ahead a little bit in card advantage. Uh, this guy's not bad. I can, I can swing in with him and. Uh, you know, sacrifice things on the stack. Will de Boer is going to give me four damage to the face. Really, I can't stop that. Not going to stop it. That's fine. It's just inter interesting choice in deck, I guess. So it's kind of like negative card advantage when you play with Will de Boer. It's kind of like a, it's like a four-point lightning bolt to the face, pretty much. I mean, I can eventually block him, but. It'd be a 7-7 if he pops up again, but chances are he won't, especially because he's got Pack Raptors. He's got two competing forces in the deck, which is not the best um, for him to have in there like that. So it's kind of clunky for him to be playing both of those cards in the same deck, in my opinion. Um, so I, I, just, I, I just play Ritualist here. And make some make some battle hoppers and uh, pass a turn. Next turn if I draw a resource I can necessary sacrifice or if I draw the right resource I can bucktooth commander and that would be pretty good too. Runs to the litter, blood bearer seem pretty good as well if I don't draw a resource here. Chlorophyllia, again that's kind of a dead card for him. It's going to be helpful maybe if he has some something, but he's kind of just giving me card advantage here. Um, his board state's not as good as mine, honest, honestly, right now. He can't really attack now because I've got my Ritualist to block and then I can sacrifice Battle Hoppers to him. Is it like, yeah, so. Another Blood Shard. That seems pretty good. Ultimately, I want to have Bloodbearer in play. Um, to take full advantage of sacrificing guys to gain life, but I don't feel too bad about this. So, I can actually swing in with... He's got no resources, so I can actually swing in with both Eulogist and Ritualist, and then when I sack something to Ritualist, Eulogist will get bigger anyways. So no matter what... Am I going to play Necessary Sacrifice or not? I need to make the decision now because... 
I'm going to play Blood Bear now, and then I'll play Run to the Litter in my second main phase, and I'll hold off on Necessary Sacrifice just to put more pressure on the table and gain a little bit of life here. That might not be the best play, but we'll see what happens. So, I can swing in with both of these guys. If he blocks either one of them with his Pack Raptor, I basically... I'm sacking a guy no matter what, basically. That's what's happening here. So you gonna, nope, no defense priority, but that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'll sack this guy and deal him 7 damage to the face. Pass priority. Second main phase, we'll go ahead and play our... Uh, Runs the litter, which seems pretty good for us right now. Just building up that army of blockers if we need them. He's really far behind now. Uh, seven damage on the board. That's going to come through. It's going to get. It can only get bigger every turn. Uh, if I get a chance, I can play his Bucktooth Commander, and, and that's going to be a big problem. So, if you play his Fist to bring it on, okay, Crash the Beast is okay for him here, but honestly, it's not going to match up well against my four-four guy. Um, I guess that, that kind of holds staves off my Eulogist. Okay, another Crash of Beasts might do it a little bit better for him, but... It's kind of lucky that he drew into those, or I don't know what happened. I guess he had it, and then he had to play... I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. I, if he had those in his other hand, he probably should have played those instead of Chlorophyllia, but... That would have saved, saved him a lot of uh, health, that's for sure. So we're kind of in a stale board state here. Two Bucktooth Commanders. I really need this resource, so we're going to go ahead and necessary sacrifice right here in our opening, our first main phase. Gaining a life. Making this guy bigger. My opponent shouldn't have any response here. Okay. I think I drew too many cards. So I've got Murder I can use next turn. I've got a bunch of Bucktooth Commanders. Probably the Sensei is going to come down next turn. Um, do I want to swing in with this guy and trade him for a Rhino? No, I think I'd rather just sit on the defensive here. I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. If he swings in, I can block one of his Rhinos force him to pump him or something. He's got two cards in hand. Not really looking like he's in a great position here to me. Uh, so I'm just going to hold off. I'm going to hold back here. Also got murder. If he, if he like, leaves a blocker up. Like, if he swings in with, like, two rhinos and, like, leaves a blocker up or something, I can murder his blocker and then swing through with a lot of, uh, damage. So that seems pretty good as well. Does this say draw three cards? Oh, it does say draw three cards. For some reason I th thought it, it said draw two. Oh yeah, there's his will to bore. He's trying to trade me right now. Does that have trample? No, it just has speed. So what I can do is I can actually block it and then sack it to this guy if he swings with multiple guys. He's probably just going to swing with the will to bore. I don't know, we'll see if he swings with anything else. Um, do I take four here? I think I could just take the four. It doesn't put me in a horrible position. Yeah, I'll take four here. It's not a problem, really. If he swung in with something else, that's probably the wisest swing he could have done there. So... Another Crash of Beast, wow. That might be a good game. It's a pretty lucky draw there. Of course, I've had those nut draws too. Funny thing is, is if I get actually all my Bucktooth Commanders in play, I can block all of his guys. Oh, there's that Wild Shard we were looking for before. So, that's why he kept a terrible opening hand. Doesn't seem like it's that bad to me. I'm not sure what was in his opening hand, but it's looking pretty good. Um, Bucktooth Commander here. 
and Sensei for the draw. I just keep building up my board state, trying to match him. Guys for guys right now. He's got a lot of damage coming my way next turn, so this is probably going to be pretty rough. Uh, no real reason to attack here. Let's see, so he's got 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18, 20. He's got 20 damage on the table. I can block 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20. 20. We're, I'm perfectly fine in my board state right now. So he can deal 20, I can block 20. I can absorb 20 damage just like raw numbers without actually uh, looking at where I would make my blocks. Yeah, he's still not in a position to make an attack here. So playing two more Bucktooth Commanders might just seal up this game. So I'm actually playing more dudes than him now, so... He's got two resources. Not sure what he has in hand. Probably not any type of pump spell. I can trade my Eulogist for two Rhinos here, and that seems pretty good. Um... I'm gonna see what he does with this Eulogist. I'm gonna push six damage here and see if he trades two rhinos. Because I don't think that he's got. Alternatively, I guess he could give up his Pack Raptor, his Howling Brave, and a rhino. But I mean, if he's gonna block it all, I mean, he could chump it. He could chump it with Pack Raptor or Howling Brave. But either way, it's less stuff on the table. Probably chumping it with Howling Brave is not a bad spot here for him, but. Double block with Rhinos to clean up the board state. Oh, he's going to triple block in case I had had the murder, except he didn't look at my resource pool. I don't have the resources to play it anyway, so. Not really. Uh, that's fine. Take. Kill two Rhinos. Yep, that guy heals me. I guess I could have swung in with Ritualist as well, because he would be a 4 4 plus 2. Plus two, plus two, so I make him a six, six. So he would have traded as well. Okay, so with this guy, I can go ahead. And I could sack a guy to block him, to kill him. I don't want him back in the deck, so I actually think I do want to kill him here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice. One of my two two hoppers. Set up a block here. Uh, yeah, he's so far he's got two of these guys. He's got two of these seven sevens in the deck. I don't want another one in there, so even though I know there's there's a, another seven pack raptors competing with uh being drawn, I really just don't want another one in there. At this point in the game, I pretty much should have it locked up because I could. I should be able to swing for the fences with another Bucktooth Commander now. With all my Battle Hoppers. Okay, so. Play another Bucktooth Commander here. Um, yeah, I think I just swing in here. I'll just kill his guy here. Kill a rhino now before he can set up a block before before combat. 
so that gives him uh, one, two, three, four, five blockers. If he takes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifteen. Yeah, that's 15 damage just on the Battle Hoppers, which has the lowest damage, so should be game here. So. Yeah, I, th I think his deck is uh, maybe just not focused enough. He needs to consider um, too much competing space, like uh, he's lucky he drew three Crash of Beasts, but he could have drawn all Pack Raptors and just just drawn one. Um, he's got uh, Wildebor in there. I mean, all those things are competing for space, and um, they keep getting shuffled into his deck, and so it's going to make it tougher for that stuff to uh, come to light uh, more often than not. Send me a challenge. All right, let's hope we get a good shuffle this time. Let's get a good Hex TCG shuffle. Which is a pretty good producer of Hex CCG content, by the way. Ooh, we're looking... Oh, that's so much better. Yes, we're keeping this. A little bit slow, but uh, we have plays. So that's we're already light years ahead of last uh, game. So open this up with a uh, Blood Shard, obviously, because that's what we need. Really need that Blood Shard right now. First turn, we'll probably play Shroom Shaw. Uh, Shin here, Eulogist. Actually, I'll probably play the Eulogist first. He doesn't have removal because he's in uh, uh, Wild, so. Ceremony is really good. Uh, I wonder if he's playing four. I've really considered going back to my ramp deck and tweaking it so I can play four of those. So, uh, I, I, but it, finding space is like the big <laughs> trick. Okay. I was thinking of trying four in my ramp, which I play predominantly. If you watch my stream, of course, you would know that. Um, predominantly I play a lot of ramp when I'm playing competitive matches as it's like one of the most dominant uh, decks. The biggest problem is that it's not interactive so I know that I can run out this eulogist and not have to worry about it getting removed on the following turn. At least not until he has, he's within chaos key range which means he needs uh, seven, seven resources in one turn or uh, five resources up total. So the only bad part about running this Eulogist out, actually I might have played Shroomkin. So this kind of comes into knowing the deck pretty well. Like if he plays a uh, if he plays a resource dork, some sort of Howling Brave here, I don't want to swing in with Eulogist because I need him to be bigger. I, I, trading Eulogist for a Howling Brave is kind of bad. I'd rather s trade like Shroom Shaw, which means I could have played him after the fact and got those buffs on him if he blocked my Shroom Shaw. Yeah, so this is bad situation I just put myself in by doing that, because I can't really swing in uh, very easily. Plus he just plays resource, so chances are I don't know, chances are pretty good that he has uh, I don't know, I don't think he'll block it anyways. We'll see. Because this stuff should be bigger, so actually oh, I can murder here. Oh, no, I can't. I don't have the resources. It's unfortunate. Uh, everything is one threshold, so I'm going to... It doesn't really matter. I can get both thre threshold here, so... It's the other clunky thing about this deck is it kind of runs on both threshold. We need both two. We need two blood and we need two wild to have access to everything. So... I think I go ahead and swing in here. Which is unfortunate. I, he might... If he blocks, I know he probably has another Howling Brave. But if not, he probably has Chlorophyllia. Chlorophyllia turn two is turn three is really good for him so I, I have to swing in on this which is unfortunate so Shroom Shaw would have been a much better uh, turn one play uh, for this very reason so that's definitely a big play mistake for this game 
So it looks, doesn't look like he's blocking, so that's good for me. Um, getting the two damage through is, is relevant. Um, can play... I'm not really going to take any... Thing. I'm not going to lose any dudes. He's going to—he's obviously got Chlorophyllia in hand here, so or another uh, Howling Brave or something. Just to or or uh, he's either got Howling Brave, Chlorophyllia, or Crash the Beast in hand because um, he left that Howling Brave up. I would think. Yeah, Chlorophyllia. Thought so. So this is my big turn to do some damage. Unfortunately, I'm only going to do three. Uh, which he can heal all the way back up with his champion ability, so it's not really the greatest. If he plays uh, Frisa Brigadon, that's going to stop my attack phase for one turn. Likely. Well, no, it probably won't. I'll probably still swing in with Shroomshaw. With my two Shroomshaws. Okay, that helps somewhat. So we're going to get our other uh, Wild Threshold here. Need. We're going to think about what we're going to do with our turn here before we do anything. I think I just murder his Howling Brave. So he keeps him off his 6 drop here and makes him makes it take another turn and swing for 3, murder his Howling Brave. I think that's the play we're going to make. We really need to stifle his ramp and stop him from ramping uh, because if he drops a resource here, it puts him within his 6 drop range, which is really bad for us. Now he could have 2 resources in hand, which means only, I've only like stifled him for 1 turn. Um, but uh, hopefully he's run out of resources here. So I really have to kill that uh, Howling Brave. Have to kill him. Really have to kill him. So... Uh, pretty good chances. Pretty good chance he's got a resource here. If he's got Chlorophyllia, it's kind of useless. Um, if he's got another Howling Brave, uh, that helps him out here too. But I mean, this this stops turn three fist. That that was the main goal behind playing that murder and pushing another three damage through is relevant. Um, not amazing. Okay, a Root Dancer. We can easily swing on that. I will definitely trade a Eulogist for a Root Dancer. plays that resource so he'll have his uh, he'll have his fist next turn if he has it in hand fist to bring it on oh no he does still doesn't have it that's pretty bad that was really bad because he had to play that resource because he because it's a, so that was really good for me um, him having to use that root uh, resource for the root dancer and not having that um, howling brave up that's that's huge so I can play my bucktooth commander here and I can play Ritualist, which seems really good here. So that's perfectly fine, because I don't think he's even going to trade his Root Dancer for uh, my guys here. Okay, apparently Shroomkin is a Shroomkin, not a not a uh, Shin Hair. So that doesn't really help that much, actually. Hmm, that's kind of unfortunate. Play Ritualist here. I'm debating on swinging in with this Shroom Shaw right now. Shin Hair dies, not this guy. That definitely pulls him back, takes him down a notch. I thought he was a Shin Hair for some reason. Um. I guess I'll swing it with Eula just by himself. I don't think he'll make the trade, so that's still three damage, which is relevant. <sighs> yeah, I thought he would take it. He's still in a good position. He hasn't gained his five life yet. He he plays another resource. He gains five life, puts him back to seventeen. So I got to push a lot of damage to get, to get get him down here, and he can play. So he's going to revert something. He's going to revert probably this guy. Yep. Okay. Doesn't do anything to him. 
uh, because his his buff comes from commander. That makes sense to me. So that's also a really bad situation to be in. This is really good to have like a singleton Elder Druid in this deck now because uh, if someone pacifies your Fist of Brigadon, he can bring him back. Uh, not pacifies, but if they uh, use inner conflict on him. He has still stabilized his board state because I don't want to just trade dudes for this 4-4. He's got a lot of life. He's technically has seven life or, or 17 life. So another Eulogist is okay. It's not really that great right now. I'm in a really poor position. I need to kind of just keep building up stuff. Do I, did I already do this? Oh yeah, I did, do, I did already do that. So, I think I just sit on this board stage, just play another Eulogist. And a Shroom. Shaw. Shroomshaw is a really good blocker for me here. Versus his 4 4. Uh, I'm going to wait till I have like full full board state before I start swinging. And especially the Blood Bear could, could be uh, very relevant for me as well. So swinging in. Yeah, I also don't have a lot of tricks. Like, I can't pump up Eulogist to trade with this guy. If he plays a resource here, he pumps up his guy, becomes a 6-6. Six, six. It's not great for me. Okay, he doesn't have a resource here. He's got six cards in hand, which means he probably has a lot of his six drops, and he just isn't able to play them. So, it's one of the problems with playing ramp. That comes, comes sometimes. So, we have to play both this and our Wild Shard here. play this. I think I can just swing in with uh, both of my Shroom Shaws, and I think he'll just take it at this point. I kind of want to just kind of start buffing up these Eulogists, and this is going to make a ton of things with the Ritualists in play, so I'm just going to go ahead and swing, him, swing it with these and see what he does with that. I could have left one back, but dealing one damage is just not the best. But he can block, block these guys, not take any damage if he wants to. But it's going to make me a ton of dudes. Make me, yeah, I didn't think I didn't think he was going to block. So now the next turn, if I swing in with both of these guys, he blocks both of them. He takes one, two, five, six, seven, eight. It's pretty relevant. So I think I can swing through on this following turn. Unfortunately, I give up. I lose a Eulogist when I do it. And I trade this Eulogist for his Root Dancer. Okay, I'll see if he's got a 6 drop here. He has to have a 6 drop here. So he's going to gain 5 life. So that puts me in a bad, uh, pretty bad board state. 6-6. Six, six. Yep, there's his Fist. So the other problem with Fist is he swings every turn, and you can't block. He, he gets one block with him, and then after that he doesn't have any blocks. He's also got trample damage, but he'll swing next turn, and I can double block him with these guys, and I'll have more, a ton of dudes that I can swing in, in response with, which is nice for me. So I might as well just sit on this board state at this point. If I have a murder that another murder that comes up, I can murder his druid, and that puts me in an even better spot because he has no control over fist. All right, well, that's not great. That's going to give us another battle hopper, um, but it'll give us a better, a decent attack phase next turn. So he swings in with fist. If he swings with anything else, I can chump it off. So I, I feel pretty good about this board state right now. He's got five cards in hand, though, so he could play another Fist, which would definitely uh, put a kink in our plans. Uh, if he plays another Fist, that might be game for us. So, yeah, pumping up the Fist, sure. Fist pumping. Who doesn't like to Fist pump a little bit here and there? 
Again, Blood really just can't deal with Fist, and uh, the only thing Wild could do is get something out of range, maybe. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw both of these guys in front of him to get him killed, so that way I can have more Battle Hoppers in play that can attack next turn. Yep, taking six. Tons of dudes. Plays a Battle Beetle, sure. Another good blocker. No, another solid blocker with a Spell Shield Gem, of course. Of course, of course. Drawing another uh, Bucktooth Commander would be really good here. That's what we really need. Here we go. So now we get to do some math. Alright, so swinging in, um, he blocks both of my 4-3s because that's the biggest damage. Yeah, I, I lose both my 4-3s to his 6-6, six, six, his 5-5. Five, five. Um, say he blocks my 3-3 three, three with his Root Dancer. And then I deal 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 24, 25 damage. I think I got this. So we'll just swing it in here. That's a ton of battle hoppers. Yeah, so I'm not even sure. Yeah, so he, he couldn't have blocked enough damage there. So he just kind of, he stifled out. And uh, killing that uh, early Howling Brave was probably a big play for that game. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get my kids back into bed here. But uh, thanks for watching the uh, sh the uh, games tonight, hanging out with me. I still see Fey Rock, the Silent Monk. If anyone else is in channel, uh, you know, uh, thanks for watching. If anyone else wants to plug their streams, you guys are always welcome to do that in here. Other, other than that, this is Terrence Squire signing off, saying God bless you and your families, and try not to reach too much out there.